Hey you two, Richard Scott here. I am on the edge of the Black Warrior River, not too far from Utah, Knoxville, Moundville area, and uh, doing an open air colony removal. Beautiful view though, but I want to show you what we got because this thing is awesome. Nice open air colony. And look at that. You see the rows of comb. It's a cool morning. It's uh, about 60 degrees right now. And that is just awesome. Open air colony. Now, these bees probably wouldn't make it through the winter time. It gets too cold here in uh, West Alabama. But you don't see that often. And the whole colony is just hanging there from the ceiling. You see each section of comb and what the bees are doing, they're keeping this comb warm inside there. It's going to be some brood. Yeah, the little baby bees being born and raised. A queen to be in there somewhere too. I think it's about the size of maybe three basketballs and it stretches back there too. How calm they are right now. Once it warms up, the bees start flying, but let me show you what I do. And I've got a vacuum rig set up here with a uh, bucket head shop vac I've got a five gallon bucket here and i had to tape it up a little bit because i lose air pressure this isn't a perfect design but it's homemade it'll do and i've got the bottom here that's ratchet strapped onto the my catch box i'm gonna suck the bees into this through a vacuum hose and then i've got screen that's inside here where the bees can't get out so below this bucket there's screen so the bees will get trapped into this box and then i'll be able to take them home and Take the straps off here, put them onto a high box, and that'll be it. Got a little queen cage. So I'm going to try to catch the queen while I'm at it. So I don't want to suck her up because there's a chance I could kill her by accident if I suck her into the vacuum. Uh, pretty good rig, though. It, I usually end up killing about 20, 25 bees at the most. And out of all these bees up here, that's not very many. But isn't that awesome? Nice little open air colony. Now further south, if you go into far south Alabama, uh, Florida, these can survive the winter time, but this far north it gets a little too cold for that. So that's it. I'm going to vacuum these bees up. I'm going to cut the comb out and take these girls home. Try to be real gentle with the suction here, but again, this doesn't kill the bees. I've got the air pressure just right to where the suction is not strong enough to kill the bees, but it will suck them into this hose here and into my catch box. And with it being a cool morning, this is perfect because the bees are all kind of bunched up rather than scattered. I'm always looking for the queen while I do this. Yeah, this isn't harming the bees at all. And that's the whole goal is to save bees to give them a new home. And these open air colonies just don't survive this far north during the winter time. Again, it's uh, the end of October now. We don't have a whole lot more time before it starts getting sure enough cold. Starting to see the comb house organized, these nice flat sheets.
looking for the queen as I go. I don't see her yet, but she's going to be somewhere tucked into there. Yeah, going to just continue to vacuum the bees off here, but you see the cap honey they've got, their food source. It's goldenrod season. I can smell the uh, that nasty kind of sock or shoe, dirty shoe smell. What goldenrod honey smells like. It's time of year for goldenrod. See up at the top, all that's capped honey. That's your food source. See some uncapped honey nectar there. And then that is the baby bees. That's where the, what we call the brood. And underneath those caps, look kind of like a scab. Those are the baby bees that are developing. They'll hatch out over the next uh, couple of weeks. Some more nectar down there. Here's what it looks like inside the bucket. I pulled the bucket head off. I've got a screen down here where the bees can get air when I transport them, but they can't get out. So all the bees are trapped in my box here in this uh, vacuum box. And where I have my hose connected, I've sealed it off with some screen. All the comb is gone, but the robber bees are coming in to clean it up now. So I'll let them do their job, nature do its work. See some honey residue down there. They'll clean this all up within a couple of hours and that'll be it. Probably one of the most aggravating things about a beekeeping when you do a colony removal is not finding the queen. And I'm confident I've got the queen, but when I don't have my actual eyes on her, kind of makes you wonder, is she in there or not? But I'll be finding out here in a little while. I'm gonna release the bees into their new home and, and call it a day. Oh, and by the way, when I finish doing a colony removal, Bees always ride shotgun. Enjoy the AC. Hopefully none get out on me on this ride home. Okay, so I'm about to release the bees now. The bees are in my catch box. That is my setup I'm gonna put the bees in. I've opened up the entrance wide and made a running bore for them to run in cause I'll have to dump some bees into the front. I've got a one by two shim I've built, so when I set that box on top of here, uh, the bees are going to mound up some, but I'll be able to fit my top over there on top of here to seal the bees up. What I did also added one frame of honey uh, down here, and I've added one frame of brood from another colony to kind of help give them a boost because I didn't take comb from the parent hive from, from where this thing came from. I didn't take any of that comb, so I've also got frames inside here that are built out. So I'll show you what it looks like. So the bees will have all the resources they need to get going in their new home. So there we go. And yeah, you see the writing. This is from a dead out I had, and uh, you see writing where I put dates on and information where these bees come from.